Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's webcast. We're going to be talking about leveraging generative AI with Amazon Bedrock. And we're going to do that by giving an introduction to the latest Amazon Web Services tools for artificial intelligence. Before we get started, I'll just introduce a little bit about Thorogood, uh, the company presenting today's webinar. So Thorogood is a company that, that focuses on analytics, technology, and a business and with a business focus to bring those aspects together. And that's that's important as we look at today's topic. It's something of a technology topic. It's something of an anal analytics topic. Uh, but we'll talk as well about that from a business focused perspective and think about how you can apply these approaches to your business use cases. Uh, we work across data engineering, data science and data visualization, really all aspects of data and AI. And within that, we're independent. So we're talking today about the, the Amazon, the AWS technologies. But we work much wider than that. We operate globally. We operate with global customers and we do that through our offices across the world. And we operate a range of areas throughout the, the data and AI lifecycle, right from application design and development through things like strategies and roadmaps into building solutions and then making sure that they're adopted and that users are appropriately trained to use those and supporting those applications on an ongoing basis. Like I say, we work with AWS and a range of other technologies. So some of those on the screen in front of you by working with that range of technologies, it allows us to see the overall space that we're in at the minute. It's a fast evolving space. It's becoming complex with more and more vendors entering the space around AI in particular. And we'll touch on that in just a bit. In terms of the topics we're gonna to touch on today, I'll start by talking a little bit in, in the background of the excitement around AI. I'm sure people are aware of it as a major topic at the minute. We'll use that to get into the angle of looking at AI with Amazon Web Services and the different tools that are available there. And obviously, if you've joined a webinar on leveraging generative AI with Amazon Bedrock, then we'll want to spend a chunk of time on Amazon Bedrock itself. And Sanjay will help us take a look at that tool and a bit of a, a bit of a dive into what's available through it, a demo. And then we'll talk a bit more about some of the upcoming features in it as well. And then we'll finish off by pivoting slightly to look at applying AI to valuable business cases. Like I say, for us at Thorogood, it's really important that we look at these things in the context of how you can actually apply them to deliver business value. And so we'll finish with that as a specific look at how you apply the technology. So to start with the excitement around AI, I'm sure you're all aware of it as a topic that is getting a lot of attention at the minute, but just to, to put a bit of the facts around the numbers, you can see on the screen the, the search terms of the, the people who are searching for AI, and really you can see the increase in that over the last year or so, starting in late 2022. And I'm sure we all know what caused that tick up. It's the stage that everyone became aware of ChatGPT, a tool that has, has kind of taken the world by storm and really made people think more about how we can leverage AI in everything that we're doing. Now, ChatGPT, I'm sure most people are aware it was released by a company called OpenAI back in November 2022. And very quickly after that, then Microsoft putting major new investments behind them. They already started before that, but doubling down on that relationship with OpenAI and using that relationship to bring out new capabilities into their platform, the, the Microsoft Azure platform. Hot on the heels of that then, we saw AWS and Google Cloud releasing capabilities. They've been working on those capabilities as well for a period, but Google Cloud and AWS joining Microsoft in really enhancing the AI capabilities available to business organizations through their cloud platforms. And so with all of those major cloud platforms having you know, new and improved AI capabilities, worth noting there's also a wider range of organizations that are building out some of those capabilities as well. So it's not just the big players that, that you're aware of, There'll be others, so maybe you're aware of the ones on the screen, but there's a much wider group as well that goes from AI labs, some of the established companies. So Meta, the company that's responsible for Facebook, is in there. We've got labs like AI21 Labs and Anthropic and Stability.ai. So a whole list of, of companies releasing AI models and getting involved in the, the technology landscape around AI. So with all that excitement, there are a couple of things that we need to introduce to understand bedrock when we come to that. So I'll start by introducing a couple of key content topics here. The first is foundation models. So when we talk about foundation models, what do we mean? We're talking here about a collection of large models that are capable of performing a wide variety of general tasks. Particularly, we think about foundation models in the language, the image space, 
uh, although they can go wider. But the foundation models are used as a starting point for AI developers to adapt those models to create more specialized applications and create models more quickly. So, for example, ChatGPT, which I think most people are aware of at this stage, is specialized from a foundation model GPT. So sometimes those are almost used interchangeably, but GPT is a general foundation model and ChatGPT is then a specialized model, which is specialized to have that, that kind of chat conversational style interaction. Now, these large foundation models are trained on massive data sets using large deep learning neural networks. So for example, language models like GPT are trained on books, articles, websites, other textual material, generally whatever the developers can get their hands on uh, that they think is going to be good to train these models with. And so by training it on that large collection of data, if it's a large language model, it will have an understanding of language, how words are used, how words appear in context alongside other words, basically that basic understanding of language. And that's what you can then apply and use it to specialize to your own applications. So when you go to build out, you can build something that's specialized to the use case and the business challenge that you're trying to address with it. Some examples of foundation models. So OpenAI has GPT, as I mentioned. The most recent, yeah, GPT-4 has 170 trillion parameters and they're, they're continually releasing new versions of that. Amazon have their own foundation model, Titan, 45 billion parameters. And then as another example, something that's outside the large language model space, Stability AI published models, including one of the most popular ones for images, which is Stable Diffusion, and it has around 860 million parameters. So there are more examples than that. There are way more examples than that, even available through the AWS platform that Sanjay will touch on later. But that gives you a brief introduction to foundation models. But it leads on to our next question, which is how do we then take these foundation models and specialize those for our use cases? And really, there are two key approaches here. So I'll talk those through first. It's fine tuning parameters of the foundation model are updated using additional training data in the fine tuning approach. And that's sometimes known as transfer learning. Fine tuning uses a large number of new training examples, runs those through the model. And so fine tuning typically requires heftier data and compute requirements, not anywhere near the scale that you would need to build your own model from scratch, but taking that foundation model and fine tuning it still requires a large amount of data to make it work. It is also worth noting that different models can be fine tuned in different ways. So not all models allow developers to update the parameters. Some proprietary models, for example, have far tighter controls on what you can and can't do. When you come to do fine tuning, you can do full fine tuning, which is what we call it when you update all of the parameters. Or increasingly, organizations are looking at, and there's research going into parameter efficient fine tuning, the acronym PEFT, sometimes called PEFT, where you update only select parameters. And there are you know, increasingly there's research going into how we find the right parameters to fine tune just what's needed in the model. And so there's improvements going on in that space. Fine tuning can be great for updating some of those models to make them better at specific use cases or types of interaction or, or giving it specific information that you want it to use. The second way of customizing foundation models is prompt engineering. Prompt engineering refers to a variety of methods that we use to update and improve the model input. So the two different approaches here, either we can change the model or we can change the input. Uh, so in prompt engineering, we're updating the input rather than updating the model itself. So most approaches for prompt engineering add more context to a prompt, usually adding it at the start, or they add more information that changes the way that the model interprets the prompt so that you get different, better output for your use case. Two key approaches to this, one is few shot learning. And in that case, we give the, in, in the input, in the prompt, we pass a few examples, and a few can be one, five, 50, but we give it a few examples to help instruct the model on how you'd like it to respond. The second example is retrieval augmented generation. And in that case, we use the approach to search and retrieve certain information and pass that in the prompt alongside the question that the user has asked. So say you ask a certain bit of information, maybe you want to get information from contract or a specific document, you might go and search for that contract and pass the contract in the prompt as well as the question that the users ask. Similarly, if there's information about your organization or your policies or you know, some market research that you've done, there are various different scenarios that you might want to use that retrieval augmented generation approach. 
And that can be really effective when there's specific documents or a collection of information that you want to be able to look up and ask questions about. The final thing I'm going to say before we get into the specifics of what's possible in the Amazon AWS platform for AI is to say that we're talking here about generative AI and specifically that because that's what Bedrock focuses on. But it's really worth noting that that is one tool. Generative AI is one tool in the wider space of AI. And think about the fact that AI embraces multiple areas, particularly as we think about applying it to business use cases. So thinking about that wider space of AI, one way we find useful to think about it is to think about it as you know, different parts of the body working together. And so when we have any sort of AI, there's going to be some form of machine learning in the mix. And that can either be through building your own models or it could be models that are available to you through some of the platforms. But really, the machine learning could be thinking about things like deep learning, reinforcement learning. And if we're talking about some of these newer models, often using things like transformer architecture. But the machine learning really forms the brain of any of these AI approaches. Like I say, that could be something that you train yourself or it could be something that's forming part of a ready built solution for some of these AI tasks. Then you have things like natural language processing. So I've mentioned large language models for things like text summarization, text classification and chat, but all sorts of things fall into that category as well. Uh, even things like translation from one language to another, uh, something that's really important for some of our global customers. Alongside that, then things like speech recognition, text to speech and speech to text, perhaps forming the, the ears and the mouth of of the body as we look at it, but that text to speech and speech to text unlocking more capabilities in terms of how you can get these different applications of AI to interact with each other. And then we have vision, things like image generation as one of the more recent things that people are thinking about, but also worth thinking about how in your organization you can apply image recognition and machine vision to get more information out of some of the, the information that you've got stored, some of the data sources that are available to you. Alongside that, then robotics, maybe the arms and the legs of the body. It's easy to think about things like autonomous vehicles, medical robots as being part of that robotics. But also we've seen organizations using increasingly Internet of Things as uh, sensors, be it in a factory or be it in some of the offices or the buildings that you control. There are different things that you could do with AI in terms of controlling buildings, machines and so on that fall under that robotics category or really any form of automation that can bring in some of those AI capabilities. So as we go as we go through and we think about the specific technology offerings, I'd encourage you to be thinking about how the whole field of AI can apply to your business use cases. And then we'll ask, why are these advances happening now? So it's interesting to think about all of the developments in AI and not just, not just the most recent. We've seen ChatGPT and we've seen some of the more recent AI models taking leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. But really the same things that are causing the advances in those parts of AI are applied to the wider field as well. The first of those reasons is that digital transformation has given us an abundance of information that can be consumed, particularly in training these models, but also in applying them. So things like smart devices, wearables, social media, digital content, the fact that we're able to take almost the entirety of human learning that's available in some digitized form now, Putting that alongside things like machine sensors, GPS tracking, and all of those different capabilities that we've got available. Alongside that, then cloud technologies have made storing and processing that data much cheaper and easier. Bringing into that things like the hardware advances through GPUs and tensor processing units, maybe things that we've associated in the past with things like video gaming or particularly image processing and video processing, but increasingly uh, GPUs being used for machine learning and some of these advanced AI applications, tensor processing units taking that to another level. It turns out that these are some of the best ways to process data and they're more accessible to organizations now more than ever with the cloud technologies that are available. Finally, one more thing playing into it is the open source technologies and communities alongside in general, just organizations being more open and sharing some of the research that there is in this area. And that's played a critical role in advancing some of the AI developments particularly the progression of neural network models, transformers and foundation models that play into the models that are taking the world by storm at the minute. But the same advances that are happening there, like I say, can be applied to the wide field of AI and looking at how that happens. So with that, let's take a look at what's available in Amazon Web Services. And first, I'll talk through 
Uh, Amazon SageMaker, which is used for custom AI models, particularly custom machine learning models within the AWS platform. I'll talk a little bit about some of the AI services that are available to be applied to your data through AWS. And then I'll hand over to Sanjay to take a bit more of a deeper dive into Bedrock. So first off, the AI services. And this is a set of, uh, if you like, out-of-the-box services that are available on AWS. It capitalizes on all of the data that, uh, that Amazon has had access to in training these, these models and these approaches. So some of those are business-focused solutions, things like Kendra, which is an AI-powered search service. So you can load your own data, load your own documents into it, and it will allow you to use the AI that, that Amazon have trained up to search on your own data and find the documents that you're interested in. And there are several other kind of, Amazon described them as business-focused solutions. They're much more out of the box and almost ready to use they still need to be applied to your own data and your own use cases, but you can apply those very quickly. The second category I've got on the screen is kind of technology assistance, if you like. Things like Code Guru Reviewer allows you to review your code, or DevOps Guru allows you to build out your technology applications and support you in that. Almost the more interesting thing here is the, the building blocks for tailored solutions on the right-hand side. And we see these being really of interest as people are building out solutions. These are you know, building blocks that you can put together as parts of your solution, building them in with other parts of your data applications. So, for example, I mentioned earlier the importance of translation to some global companies. Well, one of the out-of-the-box solutions is Translate. So if that supports the languages that your company operates in and that you have customers using, you can immediately use that Translate function to take your data and translate it from one language to another. So if there's text data you want to get access to, you can translate that across using a pre-trained model from Amazon. Similarly, there are other services mentioned on the screen, things like image video analysis, extracting text and meaning from documents, or even things like forecasting for time series data and using the models that exist for that. If you need to get into more customized models, then that's where Amazon SageMaker comes in. And SageMaker has a few different components to the tool. One is SageMaker Studio, which is for typically data science scientists or machine learning experts to build and train models using some of the leading machine learning frameworks using a code first approach. Alongside that, you've then got SageMaker Canvas, which allows often more kind of business oriented or business focused users who are less steeped in code to make predictions using a, a visual interface. Thirdly, then you've got SageMaker ML Ops, which sits alongside Studio and Canvas to allow you to deploy, manage and continuously monitor your models. And across those three tools in the platform, there are various different things that you'll do with those. So you can use them to build and train custom machine learning models. All of those could be deployed and managed on a managed platform. So the, the cloud platform almost is managed for you by Amazon through AWS, and there's less infrastructure to manage and control through that platform. And really importantly for our customers, those tools integrate with the AWS data platform tools for automation. So if you've got your cloud platform already established on AWS, or for that matter, another cloud platform, the SageMaker tools integrate particularly well with the AWS platform to make that tie-in work well. So when you've got your data in the platform, SageMaker forms a component of that larger platform for your machine learning capabilities in that data platform. So with that, I'll hand over to Sanjay to introduce the tool that is the, kind of the newest in the mix, Amazon Bedrock. So what is Amazon Bedrock? Let's talk about foundation models first. Andrew also talked about them. These are AI models which have been trained on huge data sets of text and code. They can cater to a wide range of tasks like generating new text, translating languages, writing different kinds of creative content, answering questions in an informative way, and so on. A number of leading companies offer their own foundation models. These are some examples. So what does Amazon Bedrock do? Amazon Bedrock provides a platform which allows you to leverage the power of these different foundation models to build your own generative AI applications. With just a few clicks or by invoking a single API, depending upon the approach you choose, you can pick and choose the right foundation model, give it a prompt and generate an answer based on the prompt. Let's look at some key features of Amazon Bedrock. Ease of use. With just a few clicks, we'll be able to get started with Amazon Bedrock. Amazon Bedrock provides a simple user visual interface, which allows you to work with the different foundation models. Even if we go the programmatic route, it is still a single API with which we can leverage any of the foundation models. And we will see both with an example. Choice of foundation models. 
we saw on the previous slide a number of foundation models currently supported by amazon bedrock and this list keeps growing fully managed it's a fully managed service which means amazon bedrock takes care of provisioning the infrastructure scaling security it ensures the ai applications can handle huge volumes of data and traffic your developers only need to focus on building and deploying the ai applications secure amazon bedrock prioritizes data security it uses strong encryption techniques both at rest and when data is in transit it ensures compliance with privacy regulations like hipaa gdpr and so on finally pay only for what you use users only have to pay for the resources they consume there is no upfront investment and organizations can scale their ai usage without having to worry about unpredictable expenses let's now look at how amazon bedrock can help with a business case in the recent past we have seen a lot of hype around organic or natural products if we can determine whether a product is natural or not we can use that information to see if sales have been increasing for natural products or likewise whether sales have been shrinking for products which are largely artificial i have a screenshot of a shampoo from tesco's website there's a whole lot of details under the product description the business case we want to use this information to give us an indication of whether a product is natural or artificial reading the tesco shampoo's description i can see references to oat being the main ingredient it is free from sulfates it is clear this product is natural but what if we have thousands of products i see two main challenges there is no set definition in the first example it talks about oat as the main ingredient in the second one it specifically calls out real natural ingredients in the next example it could be completely different the second problem is the main manual effort involved the descriptions are long and the product list can be huge so this is the situation we are in we have a large number of product descriptions each of them using different phrases different tones some might be explicit by calling out the main ingredients some more subtle and what is our goal we want to be able to determine whether product is natural or artificial we want to use this information for further analysis i want to bring attention back to one of andrew's earlier slides he had talked about prompt engineering in particular about few shot learning which is an approach where we give a few examples to the foundation model so it knows how to respond to the question we are asking we are going to follow this approach here we have collected a list of about 20 product descriptions we have narrowly categorized them as natural or artificial you can see that the information is in a particularly organized manner we have the product descriptions first followed by the analysis it says like you know what category it is at the end we have the product description that we want to evaluate the analysis field as you can see is set as blank we are going to use this entire content as a prompt in amazon bedrock let's now jump over to the amazon bedrock console it's quite easy to get started with amazon bedrock there are a number of examples that have been made available let's see if there is any that suits our particular use case the first one i can i see we can summarize actions action items from a meeting transcript or even an entire news article we can generate content based on a prompt for our use case we need something that can extract information from the product descriptions let's use the first one to open in playground playground is a visual interface which allows you to experiment with different foundation models you can adjust its parameters you can play around with different input prompts you can see that the prompt here is already structured in the same way as our prompt so i'm just going to replace it let's run it bedrock has suggested that this this last product is natural we can add more functionality bring in more flexibility by following a product programmatic route let's see how andrew talked about sage maker studio sage maker notebook is a functionality available in sage maker studio which allows you to run python based jupyter notebooks I have a notebook here which does exactly the same thing as what we did using the playground. I have the pre-mapped product descriptions, then I have a product description that we want to evaluate. Let's run this. The suggestion is this product is natural. We can extend this further. Instead of running for a single product description, I can invoke the API for multiple descriptions in a loop. Once I have the information, I can blend it with other data like sales, promotions, i can say i can then say this with the data and an s3 bucket all of this i can achieve it from within the sage maker notebook i can then use this data as a source for a power bi dashboard and build visualizations on top of it i have a sample dashboard here i am able to see what percentage of sales by volume comes from natural products what is the sales by value what is the operating profit for natural products how does it compare against the operating profit for all products similarly for retail profits i also have a chart which shows how sales by sales has been trending for the last couple of years for natural products and i can compare it with other categories like eco friendly products affordable products etc we have been able to blend information generated from amazon bedrock that is whether product is natural or not 
with other information available in your data source like sales, channel information, and also visualize performance against other product categories. Coming back, have you been able to achieve our goals? We have been able to use Amazon Bedrock to read the product descriptions and determine whether the product is natural or not. And then using the SageMaker notebook, we showed how we can do this programmatically. And we also talked about how we can extend this approach to blend the new attribute data with other data in your data source. And using Power BI, how we can get meaningful insights from this blended data. With this, I'll hand over to Andrew to talk about some upcoming features in Amazon Bedrock. Thanks, Sanjay. So Sanjay has taken you through what Bedrock could do today. The next thing we're going to touch on is some of the new features that are coming in Bedrock. So agents for Amazon Bedrock, which is in private preview at the minute. So we're giving you the information that's publicly available. Agents for Amazon Bedrock is something that that seems quite exciting. So you can integrate additional capabilities into your chat-based agents. So if you think about the the kind of the, the interaction that Sanjay's just shown, you'll be able to build new capabilities into that to do things like retrieving information from your existing data sources, sending emails. So let's say you want to you know, send emails to customers who have overdue bills or suppliers who are due to deliver products in a certain period. You'll be able to type in a chat request and it will figure out who needs to get the emails and send those out. Then you can use it to trigger any action really. So I've given a couple of examples there, but any action based on the solutions that you have currently, agents will allow you to, to interact and enable that in some way. One major use case that agents uh, specifically will unlock based on the information that's been given, retrieval augmented generation, something that I mentioned earlier, this is the ability to search your own documents and use that as, as part of the input to the model. So when you ask a question, behind the scenes, it will go away, search, find the relevant information, and use that to answer your query. So this is based on what we can find in the Amazon website at the minute. This is a screenshot that we've got from there. Using this approach, you will be able to connect the models up to the data sources that you have. It will automatically retrieve the data that it deems relevant to the query that you type in. It will answer the prompts that you type in based on that available information. And on top of that, something that's been really important in some of the conversations I've been ha having with customers, people want to understand, like, how can I trust this? How can I know where this information is coming from? And one of the ways that you could do that with retrieval augmented generation is by adding citations that allow you to, to drill back to the original source. So when it answers your question, it goes away, finds your documents, and then tells you where it's, where it's got those documents and where it's got specific bits of information within those documents. So you'll be able to click on that and go back and see where the information has come from. So that's just one exciting example of things that we expect to come soon in Bedrock and what you'll be able to do with some of these models in the very near future. Taking a step back from you know, Bedrock, SageMaker, the other AI tools available in AWS, how do we take these tools then and apply them to some of the valuable business use cases that we have? Now what I put on the screen here is a list of some of the different use cases, things that we're, we're doing with our customers or you know, some of those we've, we've got into production, some of them are at an earlier stage. The projects, your customers are looking at all manner of AI applications at the minute. And I put these under specific industry headers. But you can think wider than that. And it's interesting to think about the applications, but it's even more interesting to think about where some of these applications have come from. And when we're talking about applying AI to business use cases, we like to think of that coming from particularly on the right hand side of the screen, starting from the business objective. So we'll, we'll start from both ends there, from the business objective and from the data sources that are available. And really that's at the conceptual level, thinking about what are the business goals? What is it we're trying to achieve? From that, we'll build into a series of hypotheses and some of the, some of the things that we think we can do based on the business goals and the data that's available. From that, we'll then come up with what are the leading hypotheses? What are the success criteria? How do we judge success on those? And it's when we've got to that level of understanding the business goals of the different things that we think we could do to deliver on those goals that we start to get into thinking about what are some of the candidate algorithms, what are the evaluation metrics, and what are the tools that we can apply to do that. So when we're thinking about applying AI, really I'd encourage you to think from those angles, what are the business goals and what are some of the things that we can do to address those business goals using AI? And then finally, I'll pull back to that, that diagram that I had on the screen earlier and remind you about all of the different aspects of AI that we can bring to address those business goals. 
And so once we've got our business ideas, we can start to think about how these different areas of AI play into that. So I'll leave you with that thought for now and encourage you, if you want to have a conversation about this and think about how we can apply different aspects of AI to some of the business goals that you have, we'd love to have a conversation about that. So please get in touch and we'd be really happy to have a conversation about how you can use, whether it's Bedrock or some of the other AWS tools or even some other AI approaches and tools to get at your business goals. With that, thank you for joining today's webinar and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you.